When Kia slap a GT badge on one of their cars, it's not merely just a trim level with some red highlights and pretty wheels. They actually change one of their regular commuter cars into a bit of a performance machine. And one of the best examples of that is this, the Kia Cerato GT. In its baseline model, the Kia Cerato is really nothing to write home about. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a bit boring. But it is very dependable, which makes it a mainstay of car rental fleets all around the world. But the GT is something else. At the front, it's amazing how different the GT looks to the regular Cerato. It gets these fantastic front light clusters with LEDs and diagonal fog lights down the bottom there and the whole front grille is just a lot more aggressive and a lot more angry looking than the regular Cerato. It's almost hard to believe that these are the same car. At the back the design gets a little more conservative. These light clusters look fantastic at night though. I'm not really mad about these indicators being so low down but the twin exhausts make a really good noise. Underneath the tailgate is a 430 litre space which is about average for the class. We've got subwoofer on the side here and a storage compartment underneath the floor with the space saver spare tyre at the very bottom there. On the side, the design looks a bit plain. Maybe some extra creases in the sheet metal could have made it look a bit more interesting, but I do love these 18-inch alloys. They look awesome. But where the GT really differs from the rest of the Cerato lineup is under the hood. In place of a fairly staid, naturally aspirated 2-litre engine, here we've got a 1.6-litre turbo that outputs 150 kilowatts of power and 265 newton metres of torque. It drinks 6.9 litres per 100 kilometres and is mated to a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. All of that makes the Cerato GT a pretty warm hatch. Inside in the Serato looks really good. There's a nice mixture of materials, not too much hard scratchy plastic unlike a lot of other Kias. There's plenty of the uh, soft touch stuff dotted around the cabin and uh, we've got this nice metal finish here in the middle as well. The star of the show though is the 10.25 inch infotainment screen which is setting a bit of a new benchmark for what we expect to see in infotainment screens in mainstream cars because Kia are putting this into just about every new model except the most baseline models. It runs software that works really really well. It's got nice sharp graphics it's easy to use the only thing missing of course is wireless apple carplay and android auto due to a legal dispute you still have to use a usb cable to connect them but the software is in there and ready to go as soon as that's sorted dual zone climate controls here in the serato have wireless phone charging just underneath that and another little storage area which could be good for your wallet maybe two usbs and a 12 volt outlet red stitching here on the gear shifter which looks nice uh, seat controls for the heated and ventilated seats drive mode controls couple of cup holders medium sized storage bin underneath the armrest here nice big clear analog dials here on the instrument cluster and a smallish digital screen in between them with trip information i love this steering wheel this is another new kia steering wheel i haven't seen this one before seems a bit weird getting excited about a steering wheel but when you think about it it is the thing that you touch the most in the car and this is a new kia one which reminds me a little bit of the new jaguar one actually the one of the nero last week felt a bit like the old jaguar steering wheel well this is the the new jaguar steering wheel uh, it's leather wrapped, has red stitching, has a really nice feel to it, a uh, new button layout here which um, is really clean and easy to use and we've got the big centre airbag here with the new Kia logo and a flat bottom, I love flat bottom steering wheels with a GT logo on it so it's really nice, a couple of paddle shifters behind it with uh, a very short travel. The seating position is very comfortable but just maybe I'm a tiny bit too tall for it maybe because my head is touching the ceiling and it would be doing it even more so if it wasn't for this sunroof here but yeah it's not great but having said that though these seats are very comfortable they're leather with red stitching and red piping uh, heated and ventilated as I mentioned before and as far as visibility goes I can't quite see to the front corners of the bonnet but I do have good visibility in the blind spots and through the rear vision mirror the side mirrors also come with blind spot detection which is a very important feature the back seat of the Serato is a little bit of a squash, especially when compared to something like the Honda Civic. I'm 190 centimetres tall, I'm behind my own sitting position. My knees are hard up against the seat in front of me, which wouldn't be such a massive issue if it wasn't for this plastic shell that Kia have put 
on the back of the front seat so my knees are rubbing against this hard plastic. Also headroom a little bit limited with my hair touching the ceiling uh, much as it does in the front seat as well. Rear air vents back here there's one USB outlet for kids to fight over. Two adults could fit back here reasonably comfortably. Three would be a little bit of a squash but three kids would be okay. Armrest with two cup holders so look all up back seat not too bad. Available drive modes on the Serato GT are Eco, Normal, Sport and Smart. I actually really like Smart, it's actually pretty good at picking road conditions. Sport does make a nice noise and hangs onto those gears very nicely though. And being that I'm not paying the petrol bill this week, Sport's where it's at. Oh, oh I wish it had manual transmission. That would be so awesome. The suspension is definitely on the firm side, no question about that. But on these twisty roads, listen to that noise. That's a very nice sounding engine. Now you might have heard some beeping there and that is the Kia Hyundai famous collision warning alert going off. It is incredibly oversensitive and it has been the same in every Hyundai and Kia I have driven. This car has the same engine as the Hyundai i30 N-Line and that is actually a fair bit smaller than this but the performance of the engine does not seem to be dulled by that extra size at all. Steering isn't perhaps quite as direct as I would perhaps expect it to be. There's just a little bit of numbness there. Safety features that come standard in the Serato GT include autonomous emergency braking, safe exit warning, blind spot monitoring in the rear vision mirrors and also rear cross traffic avoidance assist. The driver gets eight ways of electric adjustment in their seat plus lumbar support and there are two position memories just here on the door. Okay, down change. Down change. Down change. <laughs> You've just got to remember to put it back into automatic after that, otherwise it will stay in manual, which is fine, but it'll hit that red line pretty quickly. I would say this is actually one of the most impressive cars that Kia make. My daily driver is a 1.5 litre Honda Civic RS, and that is just not nearly as good as this. And this engine is only 0.1 of a litre bigger. It's turbocharged as well, but what Kia have done with it, teaming it up with that fantastic seven-speed dual-clutch transmission and that awesome sounding exhaust, is they've created a car that is properly warm. The Civic RS is not warm, really at all. It's a little bit better than the two-litre engine in the standard model, but it's just nowhere near as good as this. And it just seems like such a missed opportunity and Honda are bringing that engine over into the new Civic. I don't know why they're doing that. I just can't wipe the smile off my face driving this car. It is just so much fun. And it's cars like this that just reaffirm my opinion that I think Kia is about the best maker of mainstream cars available in Australia right now. At 36,990, the Serato GT is incredibly good value. It's bigger, more practical, and about $1,000 cheaper than the Hyundai i30 N-Line. And with its seven year warranty and capped price servicing, if you're after a warm hatch as your daily driver, I reckon this is the pick of the bunch.